and the world was very different. When Lucy first went into an institution, Lloyd George was still Prime Minister. The streets were still lit by gas lamps, and it was six years before Lindbergh was to fly the Atlantic. Today, she goes shopping with her friend Phyllis, who comes to the old folks' home once a fortnight to take her out. She, bought, she was with me for all my dresses and that. She don't upset me or anything, she just lets me go with what I want, you know. I'm thinking of buying a new cardigan, particularly with that blue dress. I bought no end of things. I said, out of my own money, nobody else's. Oh. What do you want, though? 38. 38. Oh, they're dear now. Oh, that's a white one, isn't it? That's a white look. That's a white cardigan. So we're asking how much this is. Oh, this is a cardigan. This white one. That's a large one, 175, though. 75? 135 shillings. Yeah. £1.75 is £1.15 shillings. £1.15 shillings. Oh, that's nice. 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 So Lucy has a kind of freedom. Perhaps all the freedom a 75 year old woman can cope with after having spent 51 years in mental homes. One fifty, one pound ten. One pound ten. Eh? Is she nice? Can I have that one, please? Uh, one pound ten. Four. Five, six. Four, six. Four, six. Four, six. No, I don't want violet. I want oh, it to be nice and shot, please. Where is she? Hey! Up there. <laughs> Where's that Lucy? Lucy? Here, I want that one, one pound ten. That's a pound. Yeah. And you want ten shillings, yeah. don't you? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's right, that's ten. Count it, that's a ten. Right, look here. That's right, that's ten. And after I've got all my shopping done, then we go in a cafe. It's only a small cafe, but it's a nice cafe. A cup of tea, and I have a curtain. But you call one of these curtain squares, you know. I'll tell you what, you can get two cups of tea and... Uh, you know them curtain squares? Yeah. You can bring me two of them. Two. Yeah. One for you and one for me. Wait a bit, will I find my money, Philly? Here you are, that's it. Now, will it change back? I mean, I'll give Phyllis one, you see. I pass one on to Phyllis. Well, I don't like to eat two squares and not give her one, you know. We'll be good enough to take me out. And I buy her a cup of tea, so she can't say I ain't good to her, can she? You like apple, Lucy? Yes, I like apple. Oh, yeah. sweetheart. Yeah. Uh, have you got some apple? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You have one and all, Phyllis. Is that what's over? Thank you. Uh, you were uh, as one. Is this mine? You uh, have. Come on and sit down. Up. Have you got a plate? Oh, that's oh for the short time, the plate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I uh, here's yours, Phyllis. That's your tea, isn't it? But what if Lucy Baker had been remembered even 20 years ago, when she was still capable of looking after herself? What then? Oh, that's the happy. That's a sleep to me, sir. Phyllis Wood is 49. Her mother died when she was six. There was no one to care for her, and she was a backward child. Three years later, she was classified as an imbecile and sent to St Catharines. But five years ago, Dewsbury Borough Council and the hospital authorities rescued Phyllis. First, she went into a residential hostel, then into digs of her own. She proved quite capable of holding a domestic job, and now she goes off to work every day, like many another Dewsbury woman. But Phyllis has spent 37 years in mental hospitals. I was to wear boots. That pit, well, I was calling them pit boots. They could use them out walking, because they had them to do all the ear plates on, you know, you could use them out walking, you know. What was life like for the 37 years in the hospital? Well, the, uh, the first well, the first few years was uh, terrible. You know, if, if anybody ran away, just to get cold baths and that, you know. 
and... Uh, or thrown into a cold bath? Yes, thrown into one. Well, it's a bit like snake pit, you know, as I told you before. A screaming and shouting that, you know. And how old were you? When I went there, nine, yeah. nine year old. And this was happening during the first yes, few years? Yes, we, we was brought up with uh, women, you know, going mad. There were two wards there when I went there, but just two wards there was. There was an high grade ward and a, one for just low grade, you know, and the children was on the low grade ward with the, with the low grade, you know. And what were these low grade patients doing? Well, there was, uh, there was some from stores all, you know, going mad, you know. But how were they behaving? Oh, they were screaming and shouting and pulling people's hair, you know, pulling their hair, you know. Did they pull your hair? Oh, no, I don't. I wanted to pull my hair. You ran, did you? I ran, yes. I was frightened of them. And as you grew up, hmm. when did you start to think that you shouldn't really be here? Oh, that was about, you know, when I, I'd be told, you know. And I thought, well... I thought, uh, if I could only get out of there, you know, and try and cook for myself, you know. Did you say this to anyone? Did you say, I shouldn't really be here? No, I didn't say it to anybody, but I thought it inside of me, in me, in me you know, in myself. And I used to tell them I'd never get out of there. I was sure I'd come to die there, you know. And over the years, you still had this feeling? Yes, I still had it when I was about 21 or 22, you know. I thought, well, it's no it's me making any shit because I've come to die, you know, nobody's worried about me, you know. It took society 37 years to bother about Phyllis Wood. Today, she's on the staff of one of Dewsbury Council's old people's homes. Dewsbury have made a great effort to accept from mental homes those people from their area who could survive in the world outside. They've responded to the prompting of Dr Michael Quinn, consultant psychiatrist at St Catherine's Mental Hospital. Doctor, how many patients have you in this hospital? We have roughly 500 patients. How many of these people shouldn't really be here? Well, the um, last estimate I made um, convinced me that there uh, were, at that time, roughly 190 patients who did not require to be in hospital. How many of this 190 so far have you been able to move out into society again? 17. 17 out of 190. The result of almost a year's work in trying to persuade local councils to accept these people back into society. From Barnsley, there are 21 patients in the hospital capable of surviving in the world outside, according to Dr Quinn. From Rotherham, there are 23. From the West Riding, 56. From Doncaster, 24. From Halifax, 21. And from Huddersfield, Nottingham and Sheffield, there are more. Alice, say grace. Amen. Amen. The problem is one of finance. It's costing Dewsbury, for instance, £25,000 to build supervised flats for the patients they'll accept. For Dewsbury, that's the equivalent of fivepence on the rates. There's a problem, too, of assessing the capabilities of these people. How much of what they are today is due to their own subnormality and how much to the fact that they've spent perhaps 40 years inside mental homes. And yet, remarkably, as people, 